Hey everybody, it's Ripley. I'm back again. We're in section uh, 1.6, which is logs, 1.6, which is logs and inverses. So we're going to leave the graph paper here for just a sec, and we're going to go over here. Let's spend just a little bit of time talking about what an inverse is. All right. Now, in the functional idea, so if we're talking about functions, we're talking about functions, we're talking about f inverse of x and its relationship to f of x. Now we've talked about this guy right here, by the way, is the inverse. The inverse. Now we've talked about inverses before. We have something called the multiplicative inverse. So if I've got uh, 4x equals 12 and I divide both sides by 4, which is really multiplying by 1 fourth, then I end up with x equals 3. This process of undoing Multiplying by 4 is called the multiplicative index, or excuse me, index, the multiplicative inverse. All right? Um, if I'm doing x plus 7 equals 15, I'm going to subtract 7 from both sides, and I'm going to get x equals 8. All right? The process of undoing addition is adding a negative number or subtracting, as we learned through our elementary school days. This is called the additive inverse. Okay? Now, <clears throat> excuse me, as the ideas of functions started to show up on the scene, people were saying, now wait a sec, this is still just a mathematical construct. What is a function inverse? In other words, what undoes a function? And really, what does it look like algebraically? That's a pretty easy answer uh, to deal with because the way in which we combine functions, truly, the way in which we make functions work is by putting an input value in. So, right, I mean, we all know if a function works like this, I stick an x in, there's a thing, a rule, its name is f, and it spits out an f of x, which we know always equals y. All right? Remember, this guy right here is just the rule. It assigns x to y. Okay, so the way that this looks algebraically is if I take f of f inverse, in other words, if I compose f of x with its inverse, or I take f inverse of f of x, they undo each other, and I get x. This tells me that f of x, or excuse me, that f and f inverse are truly inverses of one another. When I compose the two functions with one another, I always get this guy out, okay? Now, hopefully you guys remember this from Algebra 2 and from, from Trig, but when does a function, a function have an inverse, an inverse that is also a function? Okay? All right, now, we're going to come to a new page. Excuse me. We're going to answer that. Whoops, we'll go over here. When does this happen? Well, hopefully, again, this is a review, so hopefully you remember that this happens when f of x is 1 to 1. And this, this is written as, or spoken, excuse me, as 1 to 1. Okay? Now, if I pop back, what does it mean to be 1 to 1? So, what is 1 to 1. It's easy. I'm going to write it in math speak so we look real smart and we can show people how much we know, but it's pretty simple to, to really talk about what 1 to 1 means. 1 to 1 is simple. If x sub 1 is not equal to x sub 2, then this automatically implies that f of x sub 1 cannot equal f of x sub 2. Now, let's think about what that means on a coordinate plane. If I've got x sub 1 over here, and I've got x sub 2 over here, when I compose f with these, I'm not allowed to hit the same place. So this has to be up here somewhere. If they're the same, if f of x sub 1, if this is f of x sub 1, and this is f of x sub 2, and they're the same, then I'm not one-to-one. -one. Now, hopefully, you guys all remember what the, what the cool little mnemonic device that we have 
is it violates it violates the horizontal the horizontal horizon well for a hor that's not supposed to be there sorry guys it violates the hor oops sorry guys I'm still in I'm still in whoa whoa yeah the Still learning the software a little bit, sorry. Horizontal line test. Affectionately known as HLT. Okay? So another way to think about this is, is it passes the HLT. So let's think about a few, let's do a, a couple of quick little examples. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, examples of one-to-one -one functions. All right, um, how about f of x equals 3x plus 2? Well, down and dirty sketches up here and like that. Does this pass the horizontal line test? Yeah, any horizontal line that I draw anywhere only hits the function in at most one spot. That's easy. How about f of x equals uh, x cubed, plus 1. It's a cube, by the way. Now let's think about what that does. Looks like that, doesn't it? Well, again, all my horizontal lines only hit the function in at most one place. All right? So what does this imply? There are uncountably infinite number of such functions. What does this imply? This implies that, in these cases, f inverse of x will be a function. I'm not going to write f of x. Yeah, will be a function. It's not going to be f of x. It's going to be named f inverse of x. Now, let's let's do one more. Let's go. Let's see. I might get crazy. Let's go back. All right. What functions? Don't have or aren't. This is where I get crazy. What f of x is? Um, where are we black? What f of x is aren't one to one? Well, an easy one. The sun. Right? This goes forever, of course. Well, check it out. Then. Bam, hit it once, hit it twice. Who cares how many other times I hit it? If you hit it twice, you're dead. What does that imply? That implies that this guy right here was f of x equals sine x. Sine x, now, do you remember this? f inverse of x, in this case, was sine inverse of x. Do you remember what we had to do? We had to chisel out a one-to-one -one section of sine and turn it into the arc sign, remember that? It looked like this guy right there. We cheated, and we do that all the time. You've seen it a bazillion times. How's about um, f of x equals x squared? You know what that looks like. That's our good friend, the parabola, right? It looks like that. That's like the most obvious case of a function that isn't one to one. Draw any horizontal line, and it's going to hit the function. It'll hit the function one time right there. Every other value, kapow, hits it twice. Every other value, kapow, hits it twice. If I'm down here, I don't get the function at all. But remember, to fail the horizontal line test, all that you have to do is hit the function one time with a horizontal line in two different spots. So what do we do? Well, we cheat. As mathematicians, we're real good at that. Because think about this. We'll, we'll think about, we'll look at what the graphs of these look like in just a sec. Think about this. Ooh, that green is just horrific, isn't it? That is the part that we stole, hopefully you remember this from Algebra 2, to turn this into f inverse of x. That is the worst color ever. Sorry, guys. Equals the square root of x. Now, if we wanted to graph the whole thing, remember that? We'd end up with this. But the problem is, is now that now this function right here, the, the green guy, is no longer a function. All vertical lines hit it in more than one place. And the definition of a function is, well, the cheater way to define a function is that it has to pass the vertical line test. 
All right. So we, we've talked about what one-to-one -one means. We know that for a function to have an inverse, it has to be one-to-one. -one. 